Scott. You know, these days it seems like my whole life is revolving around summertime frozen desserts. And recently I took a batch of my homemade ice cream to a party and people loved it. And why wouldn't they? It's full of delicious fat. And it's, it's really delicious. It's uh, French vanilla ice cream. And people at the party asked me if I would give up my recipe for it. And absolutely I will. And I hope you enjoy it. Um, but by no means is this a low-fat recipe, and it really can't be altered to be low-fat. So, if you check my YouTube channel, you'll see another summertime dessert, um, Italian Granita. It's pomegranate granita. It's delicious. It's not the same as French vanilla ice cream, but it's good. So, for the French vanilla, what we'll need to get together is three cups of heavy cream. Yes, heavy cream. One cup of milk. I'm actually using low-fat milk here. You could use whole milk. It really doesn't matter. Um, three quarters cup of white sugar. We need eight egg yolks, just the egg yolks. You can discard the whites and the best vanilla extract you can find. You're also going to need a whisk and a spatula during the course of the, um, putting it all together. And also a saucepan. The saucepan I'm using here it actually has a handle and a lip on it. I found it when I was out shopping one day. It's perfect for this because once we let this cool, you can pour it right into your ice cream maker and really less mess. But if you only have a saucepan, it works just as fine. All right, so what we know to do is turn on our saucepan. We're going to add our three cups of the heavy cream. Yum. And choose your spatula. You don't want to leave any of this in the container. And the, one of the things about this recipe is the ingredients are very important. When I was growing up, we went to this place in Shreveport. I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana, and there was a dairy there called Hamel's Dairy, and they had the best milks and creams and fresh eggs. And that's really all that this recipe is. So when you make it, you want to use really high quality ingredients. Go to your local dairy. They have all this stuff there, and it really makes a difference in the final product. I mean, otherwise, why make it? You could just go to the supermarket and buy something off the shelf. So I've added my cream, delicious, adding my milk and what we're going to do is add our sugar and let all of this stuff come up just to a boil if it boils it's okay we're taking a whisk we're just going to whisk this occasionally you don't have to stand here and whisk it the whole time that wouldn't hurt though um, just until it comes to a boil or a boil then we're going to turn off the heat and continue with the rest i can tell this is just about to boil there are a little wisp of steam coming up and that's just where we want it at this point, you want to keep your eye on it. You don't want to scald this cream to the side of your pan because you'll ruin the whole dish and you'll have to start over, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to turn this heat down to just under a medium, um, but above a medium, high, a medium low. All right. Now then, another advantage of having the spout is being able to pour this. Um, if you don't, just use a spoon to ladle it into your uh, egg yolks a little bit at a time and you want to whisk this as the cream goes in and very little bit at a time. This is called tempering. It's very important because if you added these um, egg yolks directly to the cream mixture, it would scramble them and it would not be tasty. So we're going to add probably, when all said and done, about a cup and a half of the cream mixture, the hot cream, to the eggs as we constantly whisk it. Okay, then this egg yolk mixture is going right back into the, to the saucepan. At this point, you do want to be careful to whisk this as often as possible. Um, you don't want these eggs to scramble, as I said before. And keep an eye on it. It's going to start to thicken. I'm going to keep the heat just below medium. And what we're really making here is a custard or a creme anglaise. If you wanted to add flavor to this, if you wanted to make it an espresso or some other type of flavor, you could add that now. Um, mix that in. If you were doing espresso, for example, you'd add some espresso powder. If you wanted lavender, you could add the lavender leaves in here. Let those sort of steep in this mixture as you cook it and then strain all of that off and it would give you a really nice lavender flavor. But this is French vanilla. We're making it French vanilla and that's what it's going to be. So what we need to do is add our vanilla. So it's going to be about a teaspoon to two teaspoons, depending on your, your taste. Get that in there. And just continue to whisk it. Not vigorously, just enough to keep it moving around in the pan. Um, and this probably will take about mm, seven to ten minutes. 
you'll know when it starts to thicken that it's just about done. The ice cream custard is coming along really nicely. Mine is thick, and I know just by telling, but if you don't know, grab a wooden spoon, stick it into your mixture. It's gonna coat the back, run your finger down, down it, and if the line holds, you know it's ready and thick enough to get ready to go actually into the refrigerator at first. So I'm gonna turn off my heat, and I've grabbed a sheet of plastic wrap. And what I wanna do is put this over the ice cream, but I'm actually gonna put it directly on the surface of the ice cream mixture. And that's just gonna keep a film from forming. You don't want that. Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be bad, it would just taste bad in your mouth. So, I'm gonna get this saran wrap directly onto the surface of the custard, which I've done. And then it's gonna go in our refrigerator. I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours. I'm gonna come back tomorrow at this time and put it in our ice cream freezer. That just makes sure that your, all the flavors have a chance to sort of meld and combine, and also gives it plenty of time to chill as much as possible, so when you add it to your ice cream maker, it doesn't sort of lower the temperature. The custard was in the refrigerator for just over 24 hours. When I got up this morning, it was actually ready to freeze, um, but I've been busy with, with other things, so I have not had a chance to put it in the ice cream maker, which is just fine. You can make this custard, it can sit in the refrigerator for a couple of days, no problem. So the way you can tell it's completely done is this is thickened up quite nicely. Um, you can tell it's actually thicker than when we put it in yesterday. It's almost a consistency of melted ice cream, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna add this to our ice cream maker. Um, the ice cream maker of your choice. I use this attachment for my uh, KitchenAid. I feel like it works really, really well. Um, but if you have another type, that's fine. The old fashioned ice cream makers work just fine. You just want to get all of this custard into the bowl. And we're going to let this go according to manufacturer's instruction. Mine asks for 30 minutes in the, in the mixer, which is pretty much what you want. Um, you might feel like your ice cream has come to a nice consistency earlier than that, but what you want to do is give the machine time to actually incorporate some air into this uh, custard. That's going to give you the consistency of the ice cream that you want. So I'm going to get this started, let it go for 30 minutes. Then I'll come back and show you the finished product. All right, it's been just about 30 minutes. You can see the ice cream has gotten just a little bit bigger in size, about 25% larger, which is exactly what we want. That means that some air has been incorporated into this, but not as much as what we find in like a commercially manufactured ice cream. This texture is very similar to Italian gelato, which is delicious. So what I do is I take a rubber spatula and make sure it's rubber. Don't use anything metal on your ice cream maker because that could scratch the inside. Then the next time you use it, you could run the risk of getting metal into your ice cream product, which you don't want. So I'm gonna scrape this into an airtight, airtight container, put it in the freezer. I'm gonna leave it in the freezer until I'm ready to serve it. But you know what, who can resist? I have to give this a sample. Oh my gosh. This is so much better than anything you can buy in the supermarket. Please give it a try. I really, really, really think you're gonna love it. Okay, thanks so much for watching, and as always, please feel free to email me at scottindenver at msn.com should you want me to prepare a particular recipe for you. Enjoy the ice cream, take care, bye.